Hey guys, so today I want to talk about a really important chess strategy. Uh, this chess strategy is actually based on a popular thread on Lee Chess, um, which I am following right now because also I started this thread. And this thread is like asking, just trying to understand other people's tactics and strategies for when they have a horse pair throughout the whole, the whole game. Um, and you could see I made the first post and I explained that sometimes I'm lucky enough to have a horse pair throughout the whole game. And I'm curious what other people's strategies and tactics are to make the most of the horse pair advantage. And you can see that this is actually a very popular thread right now. Um, and there's a lot of opinions about it. Uh, for example, you know, one person actually said, a pair of knights is perhaps the worst piece pair. Well, that's just not true, first of all. Uh, somebody else found a game that I did, actually, and that this game, in fact, proves that a pair of horses is the best piece pair. Um, a lot of people in this thread also said it kind of depends on the position, which I also don't agree with because I don't understand the position half the time. So it really doesn't matter what the position is. What matters is that you have a horse pair. And so using the normal format, today I am going to show you guys how to preserve a horse pair. And I'm not really sure that I'm gonna be able to tell you like what to do with a horse pair, but at least I will show you some techniques to preserve the horse pair. So for the first challenge, um, actually, if you guys wanna pause your video right now and see if you can identify, well, which, which side, white or black, currently has a horse pair. So hopefully you were able to um, identify that actually both sides currently have a horse pair. There are four horses right now on the board. And my only goal, my only goal right now is to preserve the horse pair. So the first thing I'm gonna do is always, always, no matter what, keep an eye on these two pieces. In fact, sometimes I won't even pay attention to the other pieces because I am just going to try as best as I can to make sure that these two horses are preserved, okay? Now, to be honest, I know that this player, this G2N player, I know that they're playing the London opening because that's the only opening that I know for white. And I don't know how to play against it, so I'm just going to do some development. Um, but, like, honestly, I only know the strengths of the London system. I don't know its weaknesses. It actually doesn't really have any weaknesses because it's, like, the best opening. Um, so it's really hard to play against it as black, okay? Um, but one thing I will tell you about this opening that White is doing is that um, this bishop, this is their favorite bishop uh, because it has, in the London system, has a really long diagonal and they try to get it out of the pawn chain. By the way, by the way, guys, this, this is the pawn chain, okay? And this is the bishop. So anyways, um, actually one trick you can sometimes do is to get rid of this bishop right off the bat you can move your horse here and you can challenge this bishop and you'll see that there's not a lot of great places for it to go um and actually if i was playing this and not too worried about my horses then probably i would do that but right now my only goal okay is to preserve my horse pair so that's it um, so I'm just going to do very, very quiet development, um, 
and keep an eye on the horses as much as possible. Honestly, I don't really know the system that I'm playing very well. It's like an opening that I'm just, I don't really know this opening. So that's fine. So they brought out their horse and the first thing I'm gonna do is just ask them to sacrifice it. I'm going to say, hi, do you mind sacrificing your horse? So I just at, I said, hi, do you mind sacrificing your horse right now? Um, horse on F3. Um, the reason I'm asking for the one on F3 is because it's really hard for them to sacrifice this horse. Uh, and they're, they're confused. They're saying, I mean, I would be confused too. So I'm just going to tell them I'm streaming this game and I'm trying to prove the advantage of having a horse pair. Okay. I don't know if they're going to go for it, but honestly, that would be the first way that you can preserve a horse pair is just to ask your opponent to sacrifice their horse. And that way you're guaranteed to have an advantage. Okay. Um, but since they, oh, I guess your viewers are in for a show. Okay, I'm gonna say, can I have some more time? <laughs> because honestly, I'm gonna run out of time very soon. Look, I'm already five minutes down on the clock. Um, anyways, guys, I'm gonna keep playing because honestly, they, they don't wanna sacrifice their horse. That's fine. You know what, that's fine. Maybe they'll change their mind later. Sometimes in chess, people do move and then they, change their mind and do a different move. So they might sacrifice their horse later. But I will tell you that by moving my other horse here, my two horses are now connected, number one, and they're working as a pair. That's number two. It's very important. Um, the reason it's important for them to work as a pair is now, if, if this horse is attacked, this other horse can step in and take its place, okay? So no one, no one for now can mess with this horse, no one, because it is protected by this horse and also this pawn, okay? So now I, I think maybe I should step back a little bit and explain to you guys why actually a horse pair has such a strong advantage in most situations. And the reason is that a horse is the most confusing piece on the board. You never know where it's gonna move and for what reason it's gonna move there. And so if you have a horse pair, your opponent will honestly take twice as long to figure out their moves because you have two horses. So that's double the thinking that they have to figure out where your horses can go. So right away, I see that if they move their horse, since they move their horse here, what I can do is I can try crossing my fingers that I can try and get rid of that horse. And then I will achieve my first goal for the game, which is to preserve my horse pair. Honestly, there's almost no way that they can get out of this situation right now because this horse, this is a pin, you guys. I don't know if anyone remembers my video on pins, but this horse is pinned to this king. However, there's a really bad situation unfolding right before our eyes, something really terrible just happened, which is that this bishop, see, I think I think this player, they realize the strength of having a horse pair because now they're trying to get my horse in return. But here's the thing, I 
have this pawn move here to preserve my horse. Honestly, I don't see any other way to preserve my horse than to move my pawn this way, okay? And now if you notice my pawn structure, okay, you will see that I also have kind of like a London system, but for black, okay? So London system just means that you have a triangle of pawns like this, and you could see that they have a London, the kind of a London opening, and you can see that I also have a London for black. Honestly, I don't know if anyone's ever played London as black, but all I know is now I'm gonna achieve my goal of preserving my horse pair. Okay, I'm gonna just tell them I have a horse pair. Okay, I'm gonna say thank you because maybe they, I don't know, sometimes the opponent helps me a little and I don't know if they on purpose help me with preserving my horse pair. But anyways, I think the best thing for me to do in this current position is to castle. And honestly, it doesn't even matter what I do from this point because I've already won the game. I have a horse pair. I, like, even if I lose on theoretical reasons, like a checkmate, I still sort of won because I have the pair of horses. So now, one thing you gotta remember, and this is something I learned from a DVD, a chess DVD I've been watching, is you have to look for targets, okay? And in my case, I'm going to be looking for a horse, like this horse right now is the best target. Why? Because the whole point of this video is to show you guys what I can do with a pair of horses. And if I can get rid of the last horse that they have, which is this horse right here, just think about, you know, think about what could be possible for me at that point. But in any case, one move I'm thinking about is moving my horse here. But if they capture with this bishop, then I recapture with this pawn and kick their horse. And this is my target. So I have to make sure that's what I, that's what I focus on, okay? Um, but I have to be careful that their horse doesn't come here. This would be a really good place for this horse. And I just have to make sure I don't know how, but one way or another, you gotta make sure that they don't, you know, and then the other the other thing is I gotta develop this bishop, okay? Currently, if you guys wanna pause your video and try to figure out where that bishop can go, um, you can do that. But I'll just tell you right now, nowhere. This bishop is on a speedy, very speedy road to absolutely nowhere because both both areas are occupied. And there's unfortunately no way out of this situation right now. So I'm thinking of, I'm just thinking of using, well, see, I, I should have taken this bishop out a long time ago. But I'm just gonna use this horse. And hopefully that was a good move. Sometimes in chess you don't really, you don't know if something was a good move until much, much later down the line. And I'm gonna just guess that they may not capture, oh no, they did capture. See, now the situation is pretty bad because now, first of all, my queen is under attack. Second of all, their horse is under attack. And the best thing to do right now would be to counter attack, okay? Um, one counter attack would be with this, you know, my goal right now, because this horse is under attack, is I wanna gain uh, like a move on them. So, because I, I really want to take this horse because that way at least I'll have one horse 
left on the board. Um, and don't forget this bishop. If you guys had to currently guess what is the most useless piece on the board, um, it would be this bishop. This bishop, I could tell you one thing it's doing, and it's blocking this rook from connecting with my other rook. That's pretty much the only thing that that bishop is doing at the moment. Um, its only function is to cock block my own pieces. Yeah, this is not a very good bishop. This bishop, however, it's giving me kind of a kind of a lot of grief at the moment because of what it's doing to my queen. But wow, they just just wow. I've never seen this before, you guys. I've never seen this before, but this is a full on bishop sacrifice, okay? And I have three ways to capture. I have queen, rook, and horse to capture. And to be honest, it's too, you know, I want to activate this rook. But I want to be supporting this pawn and stuff like that. So I just feel like it's a little too early to activate this rook. Plus, finally, finally, this bishop has a pathetic little square, a pathetic place for that bishop. Okay, now you guys got to be careful because this horse, like I always tell this to all my students, the horse is the most dangerous piece on the board. So right away, what I like to do is to circle all the areas that it can go just so that I can see the danger. Um, luckily, currently all the areas seem to be okay, seem to be protected. So the the can by the way recently I learned a phrase called candidate moves. A candidate move is like a a move that you can think about doing. So I have two candidate moves right now. One is to move my bishop here, um, because finally I'll connect my rooks. But another candidate move is to develop my queen, and basically tar this is a target. I learned that from watching a chess video, okay? So this is a target. Uh, they have a pretty easy way to protect this though, just by pushing it forward. I don't know. Very dangerous situation. Sometimes when I move my queen, I literally hold my breath because, like, very often this happens to me. I move my queen, and all of a sudden, my queen's just gone. Like, I move it to what seems like a perfectly great move. And all of a sudden, you guys, it's just gone. <laughs> gone. But right now, I don't see any good attacks on this queen. Um, but they're, they could appear at any moment. Like, if this horse comes here, that would be a very significant threat to the queen. Um, but currently, I have one target, this pawn. And I have still, don't forget you guys, I still am still targeting this horse because a horse, the other color's horse is always a target. Even if it's protected, like currently it's protected by this pawn. But if anything happens to this pawn by accident, I am going to put every resource I have, which is not much, but every resource that I have is gonna go towards this target, okay? And by the way, you guys, if you don't know what a target is, Honestly, I don't really either know exactly what a target is. A target, but I will tell you that a target, I don't know how to find good targets, but I will tell you that a, like, a target is basically something that you want to capture for whatever reason. And 
currently, I still think these two pawns, especially this guy back here, is a pretty good target. But I'm scared to do anything until my rooks are connected. Because one thing I learned is like, there's like actually nothing worse than rooks that are disconnected. Because speaking of targets, those are very dangerous. That's a very, those are targets for sure. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and develop my bishop. By the way, don't worry, this horse, which I told you was going to be very powerful, it's protecting this bishop. Um, so now, you know, this bishop is on a road to nowhere. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry, it's on a road to nowhere. Okay. I need to open this position, to be honest. But I have to be very careful about tactics. Do they have any tactics? Any, any side, me or them, do they have tactics? Do I have tactics? Well, I will tell you that moving my horse to this very pleasant square is a bad tactic because it would hang my bishop, okay? So either I have to protect my bishop, which I could do, you know, I need to develop my rook somewhere anyway, and if my rook comes here, it'll X-Rain, X-Rain is another thing I learned recently, it is X-Rain the queen, so that could be a move, but another move is to open the position. So two candidates, one candidate is a bad candidate, this horse coming here, that is a very bad candidate. This rook coming here, this is a good candidate. Also, this pawn push could be good for me, but I just don't know what their queen is going to do. And until I know what their queen, where their queen is going to go, I don't want to open this up too much. So I know this is a useful move for me. I just got to watch out for tactics with this horse. Very dangerous horse. So I'll tell you what's going on right now is they want to trade queens like this. And I have to decide, is this a, is this something, is this something that I should do or not? Well, usually you want to trade if you are up material or you're scared. If you're scared, you should trade because you're just uncomplicating the situation. To be honest, I'm both scared and up material, so I am going to trade. Plus, notice that this trade doesn't really benefit them in any way because the rook that captures here is like, it's, it's on the road to nowhere. It's on the road to nowhere fast. <laughs> okay, guys, I got to do something about this, this bishop <laughs> sooner or later. So the two moves I could do are putting, putting my horse here, first of all, and that will open a really nice line for my rook. Um, or I could stop this. God, this, these, pawn, this, these pawns, that's just, this has got to stop. It's just got to stop. These pawns, they are proceeding forward. And there's literally nothing worse than a pawn, an advance of pawns. So first and foremost, I want to stop this horrendous wall of pawns. My goodness. Um, notice now that there's some weaknesses here. These are all weaknesses. See? This. I have to protect. You guys, I have to protect. I have to protect the area. I really have to protect it. So many weaknesses. And the worst part is this bishop. It's like, yeah, I'm not material, but... Who cares? Because there's so many weaknesses <laughs> for this this bishop is going nowhere <laughs> very fast. 
All right, you guys, they are really, for whatever reason, threatening this pawn. So, I think I have to capture it, to be honest, because I won't win. I mean, I mean, if they take, then I retake. They can't really take with the rook because this bishop. But then I get myself an isolated pawn. You know what? I'm going to do a very scary move. I'm going to develop, develop my horse and open up a little bit for my rook. My God. I was thinking they're trying to make a queen. I did a video earlier on where I talked about understanding a pawn's intentions. And I can tell you the intentions of this pawn. <laughs> Very clear at the moment. Uh, they're trying to make a queen. I get it. No, it's fine. I get it. I think the best way to stop it is to activate my bishop. Put it down here. Yeah. What other moves do I have? Well, I have horse comes here. Puts a little bit of pressure on this rook. But after that, I guess it can give a check. That's always something. That's always something. All right. Well, that's what I'm going to do. But this is terrifying. Very terrifying situation. Okay. Now I'm going to give them this check. There's no reason why I'm doing this other than I'm very terrified. And a check is at least a safe, a safe move. Um, unless they do this. And now it's not all that safe because you see they're threatening. My last, this is my last horse, you guys. It's literally my last horse. It's got nowhere, it's got nowhere to go. Well, because, you know, if it comes here, I guess here would be the only place that it could go. Can't come here. Can't go back here. Can't come here because my last horse. Literally my last horse. Oh, thank God. This person is very nice. Look, they're giving me extra time. I'm going to say thank you. All right. You guys, I have 10 minutes. So I have plenty of time. By the way, G2N, very, very good chess partner. Whenever they give me extra time, I like... I get very happy. Okay, guys. Actually, I just realized this isn't even a good place for this horse because this pawn's going to take. <sighs> well, could do a rook. So what are, okay, what are my options here? One thing is I could do a rook sacrifice and the king will take this rook and then it could give another check. But then they're just going to take this horse. And, you know, a sacrifice for the hell of sacrifice is not very, not all that useful. So the only useful move I see right now, and since this horse is doomed, it is absolutely doomed, I promise you, guys. Um, the best move would be to take this pawn. Because now, at least they're going to recapture with this pawn, and it'll clear the path 
for for my little pawn, except of this rook. Never mind. This rook. This rook needs to be. I need to be careful about this rook. Um. All right, you guys. As usual, the horse is the most powerful piece on the board. So notice that this pawn has not a ton of moves before it becomes very powerful. So yeah, by the way, they're saying you blundered your horses. Yes, I know that. Obviously, I know that, and I am heartbroken. I'm heartbroken. My only goal for this game was to keep a horse pair. And the only thing I could do is, uh, can I have 10 take backs? Please. Maybe if they give me 10 take backs. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I can't this this person is so nice you know what now I I hope you know I actually hope see when this happens when they're this nice I don't even want to beat them honestly they they deserve to win this game like that's all I'm gonna say that was so nice of them I I'm like almost crying. Chess is never this nice, you guys. This is so nice. Okay, so that's a spar. That's look, guys. My horse is back. <laughs> my horse is back. Okay, okay, guys. I have to be smart. That was probably my last chance at take backs. So I'm just gonna retreat my horse here. I didn't even think about whether that was a good move or not. But I'm really terrified of this pawn. So first things first, let me figure out some plan, something, something to do with this particular pawn. Um, God, if I hate, if I could, this bishop, this bishop is, just has been my nightmare, honestly, this whole this whole game, I cannot think of a worse, of a worse bishop. Anyways, okay guys, this is really serious. I have given, I was given a second chance. My horse is back on the board, okay? So some things are good and some things are bad. And in every position, you guys, in every, one, one method that I recommend to all of you is in every position, Try to figure out, well, what's good about this position and what's bad about this position. And I can tell you what is good about this position is I have this horse back, okay? What is bad about this position is I don't really know what to do in this position or the, the, only, the only thing I can tell you about this position is about this horse. And I have it back. And in a way, there is actually an entire pair of horses on the board, but it's not the same color pair. So it's like not exactly what I wanted to show you guys in this video. But as you know, when you try to teach a chess lesson in the format of speed chess, sometimes you can't anticipate everything that's going to happen in a speed chess game. Even if you're given a million extra take backs and a million extra time, a lot of extra time, you still sometimes can't control what's gonna happen and have no idea what's gonna happen. All I know is, of course, now the opponent, which I'm gonna actually call them my chess partner because they're not really my opponent. Like when someone gives you that many take backs and returns your most precious piece, when they return your most important piece back to you like this, You cannot think of them as an enemy. You just cannot. They are definitely your partner, not your enemy. But now I'm gonna put this horse, I think, to good use and protect this square. Oh my God, I'm so scared of this pawn. But also, you guys, 
one thing I want to point out is, have you ever heard the expression a poison pawn? A poison pawn is like this pawn right here. This is the poison pawn, okay? Why? Because it is just, it is just out of control. And it is bringing poison down the board with it where it becomes, and you know, if you watch my other video about the intentions of a pawn, you will know that a pawn, once it gets to the end of the board, it can become a queen, it can become a rook, it can become a horse, and it can even become another pawn, okay? So we don't know what this pawn is going to become down here, but there's one small chance that it might become another pawn. Okay, guys, I'm thinking of retiring my horse back here. And it's not a very active square for the horse. So, by the way, there's active and passive squares for horses. Um, but, you know, if a horse comes down here, basically this would be what is, in some circles, this would be considered a not active, not very active. I mean, it's a little active, but it's not very active. Um, another thing I could do is play a gambit. A gambit is something where you capture with a horse um, instead of putting it on a passive square. But don't forget, once my once this poison pawn gets down here, well, there's no there's no chances for me. So I don't know. We might end up doing some sort of crazy rook trade at the moment. See now. Guess what's happening? Guess what's happening, you guys? These two horses. And this poison pawn, you guys. If there's anything that's more dangerous than a horse, it's probably a poison pawn, honestly. All right, now let's talk about my pawn structure. This is a good time to talk about do you guys see something on the board called a square of pawns that cannot be protected ever by anything? Well, that's what's happening. There's a square. There's a full-on square of pawns. Uh, this pawn is under attack by this rook. And to be completely honest, there is no way to protect it. Okay, so I'm thinking it's time for me to just give up on my pawn structure and, you know, by the way, this bishop hasn't become any more useful in the last, <laughs> in the last bunch of minutes. It hasn't, frankly, has not advanced itself anywhere but at least now with this last move oh god i gotta be careful not pre-move the other day i pre-moved by accident anyway this bishop i gotta be careful because eventually i do want to put it here but you know what i gotta be careful because we don't know what this the intentions of this pawn at the moment are unclear okay guys okay have a good feeling about this because because even though I want to bring my bishop there I have to be there's something called a pawn center which I have none of that right now I don't have a pawn center um, but it will tell you that if I bring my bishop, I can, I can almost guarantee that if I bring my bishop here, then this pawn is going to fall. So I at least should do this capture before I write. So notice that this pawn, which so far has been my favorite pawn of the entire game, it is now very threatened by this rook, okay? 
So you can try to protect it with my bishop. Finally, for the very first time in about one century, this bishop could do something. Because honestly, it has done nothing, absolutely nothing in the last decade and a half. Um, but I have this really bad feeling that if, if, I, uh, if I move this bishop here, we're going to end up trading rooks. And... It's going to be very hard because of this pawn to figure out the best, the best situation. Poison pawn. You know, one good thing about this bishop is that at least it's protecting this, the area of the poison pawn. <laughs> and honestly, Honestly, it has done, for a bishop that has done absolutely nothing this entire game, it's kind of so actually surprising. It's kind of surprising that this bishop is capable of, like, at all, doing anything at all. Like, sometimes you have a piece and you just wonder, is that piece even capable of anything useful? And, well, I'll tell you that this rook currently is not capable of, not capable of anything that great because he's attacking this guy. Okay, guys, this is the moment in the game where, you know, I have to really figure out the best place for the most useless piece on the board. This is the most useless piece. And I think the best place for this piece is here. Why? Well, because it is protecting this pawn. It's protected by this pawn. Now I have, I wouldn't call this a pawn center. I actually don't know what I would call this. It's a disaster. This is a complete pawn disaster. But at least it's something. It's not nothing. At least it's at least this bishop, this horrendous bishop, which, oh God. One thing you guys have to remember is that when a rook comes on the seventh rank, this is the seventh rank, okay? This is something you should always fear. You should never feel comfortable if a rook, if a rook is on that rank in particular. Um... So, you know, luckily it doesn't have a ton of threats because this pawn is protected by the king. But my plan right now is basically, I think, to double up my rooks. And I have to count. So there's this pawn only has one two moves before it queens and have one, two moves before I double my rooks. Um, so that's, that's as, that's as much calculation as, you know, as I'm going to be able to do at the moment. So, Yeah. If they want to trade rooks, honestly, that's only going to help me because I want to activate my king. And one thing I forgot to do earlier in the game is to centralize him. You guys always remember to bring your king to one of these squares, one of these central squares on the board. If your king is somewhere in the center, and this is a, what I call an offset center because it's actually not a true center, not a true center of the board. 
But if your king is somewhere in this offset center, you have better chances to, of basically the king being able to see all the other pieces on the board and being able to direct the army, okay? So I'm kind of hoping, I'm hoping that they actually do decide to do this trade because then ugh, I could finally begin step one of activating my king. So now they double up. That is interesting choice for them. But double trouble, I'm thinking of, I'm always thinking of doubling is the thing. You guys, if you've ever studied tactics, you will know that they have like a back rank, a, a very weak back rank situation uh, back here. King has not a lot of room. So at this point, I'm kind of going to, I have two moves I can do and pray that they don't understand what a back rank weakness is. One is I can move this bishop maybe maybe here or something and open up this line for my my rook. Um, or I can move my rook here. And that way I have a line this way. So that's the question. That is a very interesting question at the moment. So in case you guys are wondering, I'm hoping that they didn't see that. But guess what? They saw it. Good for them. Good for them. Okay. So one nice thing is I always now have this check for their king. Um, is that going to be helpful to me? Well, a check technically is always helpful. There's never a time when a check is not helpful. So now I'm going to try to... My only chance, my only chance. But guys, don't forget, they have a nasty check here too. And I gotta be careful. Gotta be very careful. All right. Gonna attack this pawn. This is my target. Target. Target number one is this pawn. Target number two is this poison pawn, but I don't really know how to, this, this bishop, this bishop is the only way that it's gonna be a bishop sacrifice. Mm-hmm, very dangerous bishop sacrifice is gonna happen, trust me. It's only a matter of time before they bring us down with a scary check. By the way, every check is scary. There's no, not really like a friendly check option. Uh, interesting. Well, I'm thinking they're gonna try to swing this rook over here. Meanwhile, I, <laughs> I am going to, Attack this pawn. Yeah, believe it. 
believe it. But honestly, that's what I'm going to do. Unless I bring my rook over here first. Okay. Guys, I really want this pawn off the board. It's a very poisonous piece. In the meantime, while my rook is on the back, I am going to work on this pawn. Also still have to activate my king. I've not been very successful in this game in, uh, in getting him into the offset center of the board. Again, here it is. Now, I want to show you guys something that's very ironic in this game, which is that, you know, you think, you think that this horrendous pawn formation would be a disadvantage. It has proven to be very advantageous to me. That's all I can tell you. Um, I don't see any danger with capturing this pawn. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to capture this pawn. Oh my gosh. They did a crazy rook sacrifice to make this queen. Look at that, you guys. Look at that. This bishop that was protecting the queening square is now gone. And now we have a situation, a bit of a situation where they have one queen and I only have one rook. Now, this is not a great position to be in if you're black, but at least I will tell you that I'm able to activate my king finally for the first time in a very long time, this king, is going to become quite active. This pawn is my only hope, by the way, you guys. This pawn, is it going to make it? Honestly, honestly, probably not. Probably not because a queen generally is more powerful than a pawn. However, However, let's begin a draw. Let's begin a draw. Wait, that wasn't a draw. Oh my gosh, she just resigned by accident. Okay, can I still tell him? Sorry, didn't mean to resign. Was asking for a draw. It's fine. You know what? Honestly, let's go back and do it's fine. <laughs> um, okay, guys, let's let's look at the analysis. Let's look at the analysis. Wait, I don't want to actually look at the computer analysis. I just want to look at I want to look at the analysis of the game. Okay, so I think so far everything was good. Actually, let's go back to where the horse was still around. So don't forget, guys, don't forget. This horse was a godsend because literally, do you remember when I blundered it all the way up here? And then they gave me literally 10 take backs to preserve this horse. I don't even know if anyone remembers that because this game went on for, this is one of my longest games, honestly. But, okay, this horse, I love this horse, you guys. I just love it. And honestly, do you remember what I said about this person, G2N? They deserve to win because, because look at all the extra time. Look at this, 15 seconds, like so much time, so much extra time, and a million take backs for this particular horse. So... Honestly, am I upset about this this loss? No, not at all. This this partner, this chess partner, they deserve to win. 
I mean, look at the look at these pawns. Look at these horrendous pawns. Anyone in this position with these kind of pawns, honestly, honestly, they deserve to win. However, let me just remind you some of the key themes from this game, okay? The first theme was preserving a horse pair. And I preserved a horse pair for probably the, the probably I in this game set a world record for someone having a horse pair for the longest known time in a game. And I don't mean time as in like number of moves. I mean time on the clock. Probably this is the longest amount of time in a game, especially in a speed chess game, that a horse pair like this was preserved uh, for so long. So that was the first key theme of the game. And then another theme I want to remind you guys is about this bishop. Now, if you want to pause your video right now and take out your journals and take out a pen and in, in your journal, write the feelings about this useless bishop that you have. If you guys have any feelings about him, please write them down in your journal and you don't need to read that those feelings to me. I don't I already know what the feelings are, which is when something is as useless as this specific bishop, it I can't even I can't even. I it's fine. It's fine. Anyway, this bishop in the entire game advanced one square. And then let me just remind you that if we go through the entire the entire game, we get to this beautiful pawn center, and we get to this position. This bishop had one job, okay? This bishop had one job only, which is to keep keep this poison pawn from becoming a queen or a rook or even another pawn. By the way, I'm gonna tell this guy. I'm surprised your past pawn did not become another pawn. Sometimes a pawn can become another pawn instead of a queen. Okay. Anyways, back to the back to the game analysis. This bishop, okay? This bishop had only one job and it had actually almost no jobs through the whole game, but it had one job which is to keep an eye on the poison pawn. And guess what happened? About several moves later, the bishop, watch what happens. Watch what happens. This bishop right here, instead of doing the correct move, which is to prevent this poison pawn, it just died. <laughs> just... Okay, guys, I think you get the point about this game. Anyways, I just want to look at, I always look at the uh, the chess partner afterwards and kind of stalk them a little bit. He practiced a knight and bishop, and bishop mate. Honestly, I didn't even know that was a mate. I thought that was, I seriously thought that was a draw. Knight and bishop. How do you even... Look, clearly this person is very advanced and also very kind because remember how many take backs they did and they let me keep the horse. So good job, G2N. I am going to follow you. And that's the end of this lesson. I hope you guys learned.